Q1057, Albany's Rock Station in the Q1057 app. I'm Steve King and excited. The Blue Oyster Cult is coming to the Rivers Casino and Resort December 28th. Of course, you know them, Godzilla, Don't Fear the Reaper, all their great hits. And Eric Bloom, who is their uh, lead singer and guitarist, on the phone, excited to have the opportunity to talk to you uh, today, Eric. Hey, uh, first off, Happy belated birthday. I know uh, you had a birthday back uh, December 1st, man. I did. Did you do anything fun for your birthday, or were you on the road touring? Uh, I was on the road, actually. It was a travel day. <laughs> I'm sure that happens a lot since Blue Oyster Colt's basically been on the road since 1970-ish. <laughs> yes, I've spent uh, probably more birthdays on the road than, uh, than at home. Do you guys do much for your birthday, or is it kind of a low-key affair? Yeah, I walked into the uh, dressing room, and I said to uh, our tour manager, I said, where's my freaking cake? <laughs> So tell me about the tour. Uh, I know you guys are taking a little break right now, and you actually get back out right after Christmas, but uh, tell me what the tour's been like. Well, it's not even that we're off. We're uh, actually recording. Ah. Um, We're uh, in the middle of making our next album, uh, and it's uh, a pretty exciting time. We, um, let's say we're probably halfway through, and uh, this record will come out probably at the end of next summer. That's awesome. I know that was one of my questions I was going to ask you about. You haven't done a studio album since 2001, so you're in the studio actually working on a new Blue Oyster Cult music. Yes, and uh, we're working on 14 different tracks, and um, this will be released, um, I would guess, August, September of next year. And um, plus, the label is putting out four or five other previously either heard or unable to get until now or uh, kind of rarities kind of things that uh, they're doing a very good job of, of remixing uh, new artwork. Um, a couple of interesting things coming out in January, February. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, live broadcasts and uh, very, very interesting. Are you, are you like heavily involved when it comes to remastering and doing all that kind of stuff or do you kind of let that, you know, the producers do that? No, we're uh, we're uh, involved. Um, uh, one of the guys in our band, Richie Castellano, is an engineer, so uh, he's sitting down with our management and uh, involved with the remixing. Uh, where a lot of the stuff is um, that came out back in the day was uh, there was no Blu-ray, mm-hmm. so this is um, being remixed for Blu-ray surround sound. It's all coming out in vinyl, which wasn't uh, done at the time, right? So uh, this is this is all coming out in uh, DVD, vinyl, Blu-ray, et cetera, surround sound, just just about every kind of uh, format that's current today. I think the explosion of the last few years of vinyl has been such a great thing for music, especially classic music, classic rock kind of music, because it's so much warmer. It has so much, I don't know, just a better feel to it than anything, you know, digitally done. So it's so nice when stuff comes out on record now. Yeah, we, uh, we're we very glad that the uh, label we're with now has, uh, you know, jumped in with us because we, we would really like... Uh, they see the picture and, mm-hmm. and everything I've seen from these guys has been uh, that they're they're in all the way on uh, every new format and old format like vinyl yeah that's awesome so what do you what do you do to keep busy when you guys aren't out on the road I know you're a, you're kind of a car guy you're kind of a gearhead I am you know I, I go to um, you know cars and coffee on occasion if mm-hmm. I'm you know around um, I go to uh, reading car blogs and and I'm lamenting the fact that Automobile Magazine and Auto Week just went out of business. I know. Doesn't that suck? All those hot rod magazines, all the, you know, all of those car craft and hot rod and popular hot rodding and all those now will just be digital. They won't be actual print copies anymore. You know, what are you going to do when you head for um, head for the can? Exactly. You know? I have a stack probably five feet tall of car magazines that that's exactly what they're there for. <laughs> That's exactly so, especially when you're on the road like I am, and oh, sure. um, uh, you you know you want to have a magazine. Mm-hmm. What's your What's your favorite car? Do Do you have a classic or something right now that you're uh, obsessed with? I don't have anything really really unusual. No, mm-hmm. um, I just have a couple of cars I like. Yeah, very cool. Hey, I saw a picture of you at the uh, at the Corvette Museum. 
and uh, I saw you there and thought maybe you were a big Corvette guy. Well, I do. I have a, I have a Cadillac XLR, mm. which was made there. Yeah. And um, just a car I always admired when they first came out. And they, they only made them uh, from 04 to 08. And um, so I went there and I met a, a, a guy in there who was a fan, luckily. Mm-hmm. And um, he gave me a personal tour. And then after I left, he sent me, you know, he said, give me your VIN number. And he gave me, I gave him my VIN number and he sent, um, sent me all kinds of uh, stuff on my personal car that they dug up out of the museum. Oh, that's uh, cool. Their records. Yeah, because that's basically a Corvette chassis with mm-hmm. uh, Cadillac stuff on it. Yeah, that car is pretty awesome. So uh, the other thing that I read about you um, was that you're a gamer. Do you, uh, you, play, you play video games uh, and, and stuff. What are, you, what are you playing right now? Well, I'd say the one I'm most involved with is, uh, believe it or not, this may sound juvenile. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm good with that. But, uh, you know, I, I, I gave up actually all the, um, I, I was heavily involved for years in MMOs on laptops, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, in, a, in, P, in the PC world. Right. Just for portability, I'm playing mostly iPad games now. Okay. And uh, I'm playing, I'd say the one I'm most involved with is um, Transformers Earth Wars. Oh, yeah, that's a great game. My yeah, my son so, plays um, that. Uh, all, right, all right, yeah, I think a lot of people are playing mm-hmm. it. And uh, it, it really is kind of a little bit demanding. Yeah. Especially when um, on Fridays through Sundays when they have uh, you know events. So, uh, you know, if I'm in a rental car, you know, where I, I, I say, excuse me, guys, I'm not. I've got to play all weekend. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm a big gamer myself, so I totally, uh, I totally understand that. Where you know, you find a game that you love, and you get a little obsessed with it. And when you've got an opportunity for some downtime when you can play, it's a great escape. I, uh, I would be remiss uh, if talking to you, we didn't bring up the Saturday Night Live skit, of course. I saw an interview recently with Christopher Walken talking about he, um, I think it was tongue-in-cheek, said that he hated the fact that he did that skit because now when he does anything, people bring cowbells to him. <laughs> Do you guys? Yeah, I can do, imagine. Do you guys have the same feeling yeah, towards that? Will, I saw Will. I saw a piece with Will Ferrell saying he ruined uh, Christopher Walken's life. Yes, exactly. You know, with, you know by by putting him in that skit. <laughs> you guys don't feel that way, though. I, I would think that was a huge resurgence in, in, to some fans that maybe had never even heard of Blue Oyster Cult. Well, it, it certainly didn't hurt, except that also you know a lot of people who think they're being very clever, you know. Um, Post that on my like, my Facebook page. Oh, of course. But, oh, sure. Yeah. Did you know it was going to happen before it actually came out, or no, was we it? Did not. Yeah, you, know, you had no we clue. Did not. And actually, I saw it live myself. No yeah. way, really. Yep. <laughs> what was going through your head when you're watching it live? Well, it's sort of like a jaw drop uh, kind of situation because when they when the music starts and they say uh, you know something about the oyster cults being done. I, I, you know, and it was pretty fast. You know, it was only a couple of minutes long. Right. Just sitting there saying that they're doing me, you know, wait a minute. You know? Right. <laughs> so uh, it's kind of funny. They got a few things wrong in it, but uh, in the big picture, you know, it was still, still pretty good. Yeah, I know Bruce Dickinson wasn't the producer of that song. I know that was one thing that they got wrong. And there's no Gene right. Finkel in the band, at you know, <laughs> that they kind of used you as a caricature kind of as the as the player of the cowbell. Yeah, well, Will Ferrell plays Gene Frankel, and and uh, and um, he's supposed to be a guy that looks like me. But and also the the you know Gene said, talks to the guy that looks like Buck, and mm-hmm. he calls him Eric. <laughs> so they get a, you know a few things backwards, but uh, it's it's still you know the the gist of it is still funny. Yeah, it's awesome. I I can tell you uh, that you know it, being in classic rock radio, uh, you can't imagine how many times you know we play "Don't Fear the Reaper" and people will call up and you know the more cowbell kind of thing. It happens almost every time we play your song. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's inevitable. Yeah, that's what you're going to be remembered for now forever. <laughs> Yeah, this is, we don't have any uh, any input on that. No, um, and you know, I mean, when I see uh, you know Fallon or any of those late night shows, and he's on there, uh, Will Ferrell wrote the skit, 
Mm-hmm. You know, they might play Don't Fear the Reaper as his intro music. True, true. Um, and, and he stuck with it, too. I know at one time you guys tried to get Will Ferrell to come up on stage with you and uh, and, and play Cowbell. Have you ever had that opportunity? Um, never really. Uh, there was one time where, uh, you know, maybe a year or so after it happened, um, he and he was near Hollywood at the time, and we tried to contact him to come down, but he was too far away. Oh, that's too bad. That would have been hysterical. Not to say it will never happen. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. It might happen at the Rivers Casino. You never know. Will Ferrell might be in the area. Uh, I kind of doubt it, you but know, you never know. If, if he's near, if he's listening to this broadcast, <laughs> he's invited. Oh, I'm sure he has an open pass to come on by anytime. Absolutely. <laughs> but he has to wear that, uh, that same shirt. <laughs> With his gut hanging out? <laughs> exactly. Hey, real quick before I let you go, I have to tell you a quick fun, kind of funny story about how I was introduced to Blue Oyster Cult. Um, when it was the early 80s, do you remember the early 80s when all the religious groups came out against all the heavy metal and rock bands about all the, they're all Satanists and all that kind of stuff? Do you remember that? Um, yes. So I, I was in high school and there was a really hot girl that I liked who was very religious, went to this church. She invited me to a church thing. I went and it was a live, these people like talking about all these evil bands and they were talking about Black Sabbath and Deep Purple and all these, you know, on and on and on. And Blue Oyster Cult was one of those bands. Well, at the time, um, I hadn't really known any of your music. So to give examples, this preacher's up there and he says, you know, well, here's here's one. And they played a clip of Godzilla. And then he said, and here's another. And they played a clip of of Don't Fear the Reaper. And I'm sitting there and I'm like practically writing them down going, Blue Oyster Cult, got to go get those albums, got to go find that, <laughs> got to go get those. And so that was my introduction to Blue Oyster Cult. Immediately left there, you know, of course I was like, I can't believe I got scammed into it. It was practically like going to an Amway meeting and went off to the record store and went and bought Blue Oyster Cult albums and, uh, and have been a fan ever since. Well, there you go. Uh, it's, uh, everybody um, finds out about us in different ways. Exactly. I thought that there, was there, one of the there's, weirdest. There's like a, there's like a, a strain of that going on on Young Sheldon. Oh, yeah. That's uh, right. With the uh, the older brother likes the uh, church girl. Mm-hmm. See? Very similar, actually. That's funny. I wonder if they heard yeah. my story and they stole that storyline. Eric, well, it's a pleasure talking to you. Can't wait to see you December 28th at the Rivers Casino. I will definitely be there and uh, have safe travels. And, uh, man, we can't wait to see you. Have a great Christmas and a pleasure talking to you today. Yeah, we like uh, like playing upstate New York because, you know, Buck went to Clarkson. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I went to Hobart. And, uh, you know, it's like coming home to uh, where we started. Although, uh, unlike when you were with, you know, soft white underbelly, you're not driving around in a, you know, old van going gig to gig. No, but, um, you know, we do plenty of plenty of work where we're, we're on the road like that. That's awesome. Plenty. Don't worry about it. <laughs> we still are. You know, we might land and just uh, get a van, put our gear in it, and, and hit the road, uh, you know, on occasion. That's awesome. See, that's not just that, this, not that far from the old days. No, that's no, all nostalgic. That's good, Eric. Yeah, we, we love the uh, the upstate New York vibe, so uh, we're looking forward to it. Good. Well, we'll see you December twenty eighth at Rivers, man. Congratulations uh, for the the new album coming out. I'm excited. All the good stuff for twenty twenty for you guys, and uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah, all the information is uh, on blueoystercult dot com or uh, on the Blue Oyster Cult uh, Facebook page. Citizens of upstate New York, Blue Oyster Cult coming your way soon. All right, thanks, man. Bye, man. (laughs) Bye.